This is Off Planet Radio. Hey everybody, welcome to Off Planet Radio. This is Randy Moggins. Um, a special edition, sort of, we'll call this an interlude show as part of the Eye of the Needle series. I don't know where it's going to fit in terms of any established narratives or the chronology, so-called, that we've been outlining in the series. But there's some things I want to talk about and discuss a little bit. And uh, I thought that... Uh, this might be an opportune time to do it because there's really a lot going on right now. Um, right up front, I'm going to load this into the front end. It may be a bit controversial. I hope not. But I also think that I need to place this in a prominent area of the show in order that it be able to be retrieved for purposes of review by uh, other parties who are interested, and because it covers something that branches out into what is called the alternative media community, I want to address some things that I have concerns about and some things that I want to be perceived as both constructive criticism and also a way to possibly view things that people put out as potentially predictive, which includes my own material. Because in a lot of ways, what I did when I began the Eye of the Needle series last year was I sort of stepped back into a circle that I had not been in for the previous um, nine years, which was where I was in my previous long-running radio show, The Threshing Floor, when we were doing, at that time, Bible Prophecy. And that show basically went through uh, about five years of continuous revisions and studies and trying to grasp what was going on inside of that black cube book called the Bible. And in the end, what it turned out was that I realized I no longer believed the way I originally did when I began doing that work. I didn't believe the same as I have since I was a child. I also began to integrate other material of a spiritual nature, plus coming to terms with my own memories, my own visions, my own concepts of things based on experiences that I've had, the studies that I've had, the teachers that I've had. Uh, our, our experiences here compile in very interesting ways. And so when I listen to material or read material, I have a certain lens like everybody else. And that lens is pretty wide in terms of I'm willing to embrace the potential for differences in communication styles and language and the idea that, you know, really we're all kind of poking around in the dark with a with a needle. Oops, there's that needle thing again. With a needle trying to trying to uh, trying to figure out what the landscape is on all this. So I want to come at this in right spirit, but um, several people have messaged me over the last twenty four hours in regard to a show that was put out by Shane the Ruiner. And it's called The Machine Interface. Um, it's part of a series that Shane has been doing. I saw one other segment of the series that he's done. And because I'm both writing a book and compiling the Eye of the Needle series, which is a fairly intensive amount of both research, writing, and then bringing it into an area to integrate it, I have not listened to a lot of external outside material, specifically in the areas of, I guess, what we would call um, prophecy predictions, 
of things spinning around where we are currently in time. I've really wanted to stay very close to my leadings, which goes back to, um, well, it goes back to 2012 and the work that we did then, and then forward into 2019, uh, spinning off of the 2017 solar eclipse. And for all of that, you can go back and listen to the Eye of the Needle series. We'll be picking that narrative up as well. So in the machine, I first off need to say this. Having not listened to the entire series, I'm going to focus my comments on what I have listened to and my own response and sort of try to mirror the responses of some other people out there as well. But having not heard the entire series, it's not fair to say that I disagree with the premise of what Shane has put out in the entire series. What I did here in the Interface show was basically a cause of concern from the standpoint that as Shane has gone through the series, he's built a narrative based on a concept that we, we, essentially we who, well, that's conditional on how you view the next line of the narrative that we supposedly living in this construct slash simulacrum slash uh, simulation slash holographic representation that we are actually plugged into pods and our bodies are inanimate they can be revived but that essentially we are passive mental partakers of a replay of, I believe Shane says 16,000 years, I could be wrong about the number on that, that, that there was a snapshot taken of what we would call the organic, quote, timeline from uh, Gaia Terra, the organic earth, or what our friend Lao de Leon calls Eden, the Eden world, and that, that basically that snapshot was then used to create the artificial construct called the machine, which then wrapped itself around organic earth and subsumed its reality, basically cloaking the earth off. And as a result of that, the inhabitants here are uh, hooked up to um, pods, basically life support systems for bodies that are then having what I, I have to presume is some sort of mental experience. And there's so many things I could say about this. And first off, I want to cloak this by saying that, Shane, if you hear this or you hear of it, and if you hear of it, I hope you also listen to it. I have great affection for you. I have respect for your intellect, your wit, your charm, your talents, and an abiding love for the way that you have reached out to people over the years. Having said that, um, I also felt compelled to respond, not out of any sense of competition, but rather sort of in the collegial sense that I think we have an obligation when we stake some territory to kind of reproof people who are working in the same field where there appears to be a strong disagreement. So some of the things that I'm going to say are critical. They are not critical of the man. They are critical of the ideas or more importantly, what, more importantly, what the source of the ideas are, the source of this information and where it came from. And then look at how that stacks up with what I understand about what's currently going on as well. And I know Shane's aware of what I'm doing. I've, I've heard him mention it when he was on Nox Mente with Jerry and Nish. Um, and, and he's been very supportive. I supported Shane doing this series. I actually promoted the links on Twitter and wanted to see him step out and start to do this kind of thing. And I've seen some of his other shows. And I really appreciate the style. I appreciate what he's doing. I especially appreciate the way he's dealing in the area of magic. And that's something that's really important to me, that we begin to understand magic 
And when I talk about magic, I'm not talking about the occult black magic. I'm not talking about trickster magic. I'm talking about the organic innate magic that lives with inside of our own consciousness. And this goes to the core of some of the objections that I have over this representation of what I'll just call the pod people. And that is that magic, real magic, is an alchemical act. It springs from the individual soul consciousness to imagine, to I mage, your world around you is a constructive act of agency inside of any reality construct that, that you would inhabit. And when we talk about magic, magic has a purpose. Magic has a reason. It is a flow of energy. It is an act of entering into realms where we have the ability to do things we would not normally conceive of in the physical dimension. So my difficulty with the hypothesis of the pod people and the construct subsuming organic earth has to do with the fact that our agency, our interconnectedness to something that is not locked inside of whatever physical vessel we inhabit, or the construct in which it takes its milieu, but rather that above that, and always guiding it is something that's profoundly spiritual, something that is profoundly a holographic aspect of what you would call the creator or the creators, the people who brought our consciousness to the level that it existed, let's just say 13,000, 16,000 years ago. You can actually go back 100,000 years ago. And the evolution of man as a being was a very long process. You can call it evolution. It is in one sense evolution. But not evolutionary in the Darwinian sense or in the sense of the emergence of man anthropologically from what we would call the simian, the ape, the bonobo, but more as we evolved along different paths based on the natural concepts of uh, diversity of species. That there was no single origin of the human on this earth. There were multiple origins that over time converged. Because again, nature desires diversity, but ultimately the forces of nature dwindle things down to smaller and smaller numbers. And you can go um, listen to the Wolf Famous material. We deal with this a lot, talking about um, the early roots of mankind and cannibalism and um, the material that he's brought out. My point is that my understanding, my viewing of this, everything that I've researched, read, written about for over 30 years of my life, has led me to the conclusion that uh, humanity is something quite unique, quite special, that this world that we inhabit, which has been under huge amounts of oppression, pressure, quarantines, is in fact part of a very unique evolution of beings, not even just humans, of worlds, of galaxies. Earth is pivotal to that. And so to divorce ourselves from Earth so radically that, that we can be told that we are inside, not even just a simulation, and we can put that aside for a minute, inside of what mm, I called in a show that I did with Dr. Shamil Asher a few years ago, the simulacrum, which is basically exactly what Shane's talking about. It is a snapshot that is then replayed, looped, replayed, looped, replayed. And the temporal aspects of this in itself are interesting in the way that basically Shane has broken out this mirroring of time and cycles of six over uh, what, whatever it was, uh, 15, 16,000 years, 13,000 years. I don't remember the exact numbers. I think his numbers actually kind of mirror the, the, um, 
the Mesoamerican calendar in some respects, so what would it be, 13,500 years, roughly, they took a snapshot. And then once the construct was built, inhabited it with the pod people who are having a mental experience of life, virtualized through a 3D generator, overseen by the machine, and inhabited with um, virtual intelligence, artificial intelligence, and then, of course, the, um, the background characters, the NPCs populating it as well. It gets to be a fairly complex sort of equation over time when you begin to factor all of this in. Given that the average person still actually believes that they're walking around as flesh and blood and this is it, this is, this is all there is. You see, that's, that's the low end of the scale right there. That's basically mechanistic, materialist, chemical science, life as a biological form with a little bit of intelligence thrown in just to make it interesting and, hey, let's all party. But on the high end of it, what we're looking at here is the concept that an intelligence exists in captivity inside of a replicated spheroid that houses what? And again, not seeing the whole series, I, I'm, I'm leaping around here a little bit, but my point is that my takeaway from this video was that effectively there is no escape from this, and that's the takeaway that several other people who had notified me of this, and there were several. In fact, I've been asked over the course of uh, Shane doing this series to comment on it, and I've said, no, I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> because frankly, whether I agree or not, I would fight for his right to say what he said, and I would defend his ability to have it on the public platforms, and I would openly be very pissed off if anybody throttled this. And having said that, I feel the same way about my own material. I'm basically putting out predictive material. I'm basically spelling out what I believe is the nature of the construct we live in, and more importantly, the nature of the consciousness which abides within us, which transcends physical dimensions. Again, going back kind of to the magic, the I-magination. The idea that our consciousness is extremely attenuated to this present earth realm, but it is not restricted to that, that the restrictive consciousness is simply a function of the fact that we have chosen to dwell on a physical plane. Whether that plane was taken captive, whether it was placed into quarantine, whether it has been under heavy assault from off-world beings, which it has, whether it has been trafficked galactically and stripped for its goods, and whether its people have been subjected to global mind control. All of that is true. And so what I'd like to entertain in this segment is largely that um, we look at this constructively in terms of what we can glean from what somebody is showing us. Um, most of what I have attempted to do in a broadcast career that's now 20 years old and on the internet it is, let's see, 17 years old and doing this platform, the off-planet platform, for what is now 10 years. Um, I've amassed enough experience in media to understand the power of words on beliefs. And the trajectory of thought when people begin to digest and integrate information, especially information that is what I call eschatological, you know, end times prophecies, or in this case, there is no end, it's just a constant loop. And it's not, it's not a new script. This is like Dante's Purgatorio. It is the mythological fate of Tantalus who has to relive constantly over and over again his torments. 
And and see, Tantalus there is, is a typology of anybody who's ever been subjected to any type of traumatic mind control. The Griffin book, which is the jumping off point for the Eye of the Needle series, Revelation, a briefing for the peoples of Earth, uh, Griffin talks about these ridges that are energetic ridges that are built into the body as a result of trauma-based mind control programs. And we can extend that way beyond just the black budget programs, the high-level cabal, satanic ritual abuse structures, or any of the other um, covert programs to include a great deal of our society because a great deal of our Western society especially has been brutally beaten, raped, and sodomized in a spiritual sense by a paralyzing sense of helplessness and fear. And so the message has always been empowerment, and the message is how do we, let's just say in some way, do a jailbreak? Well, the answer is that your prison lies where? Your prison is essentially a state of consciousness. And regardless of the condition of the world around you, and this is actually based on psychological studies that were done over a long period of time on prisoners of war, especially after World War II, and debriefing people who were held in prison camps. The sense of survival that holds a person's core together is part of something that is ineffable. It is completely unexplainable because in the throes of abject despair, torture, starvation, and watching people around you being slaughtered, people hung on to something inside of them that we call the spark of life, the light inside of us. I mean, this is the light of these tubules, these, these nanotubules that, that, that are inside of our body. This is part of our DNA structure. There's something inside of us that holds on to the essential core of life because of hope, faith, and trust in a mission. And people who survived POW camps, and I met some of these people when I was a kid. I met survivors of Auschwitz, people who showed me their tattoos and told me their stories, nightmare stories. What kept them holding on was the fact that they then one day stood before you and told you their story about how they survived, how they were liberated, how they went on despite all the trauma and abuse to lead decent, productive lives in a world that they now understood from a standpoint that most of us never, frankly, ever have. People who have uh, in any way survived trauma and abuse have a completely different perspective on the world because their consciousness itself has been pushed to levels that people in the mundane workaday world don't understand. And so anything that would seek to diminish a real sense, a real sense of pushing beyond the walls, the boundaries of this present sense of isolation, containment, uh, hashtag lockdown, hashtag face mask, hashtag aren't we really sick of this yet, hashtag let's stop fucking with each other. And let's also not fuck with people that are supposed to be part of our community. And let's not gaslight people on the level of telling them that they're basically somnambulant dummies, meat packs, sleeping inside of pods somewhere in a reconstructed, transmorgified planet Earth. The, and I'm sorry I have to be that blunt, but I have to be that blunt. My takeaway listening to it and playing back certain parts of the video is, despite sometimes the gleefulness between bong hits, Shane, you sort of impart a hangman's noose in terms of 
what the fuck? What, what is the point, dude? I mean, once you've been told what you tell people in this series, aren't you basically resigning them to something that you would call existential morbidity? And at the very same time as people were dealing with the isolation, the fear, uh, in, even, knowing, even knowing that COVID is on some level an op, it's an op, but it's a good one. And it has enough veracity that for the most part, it's taken hold because the consensus is that we really have something to be terrified of here. We have a pandemic. And that changes the psychological theater of human perception, even for people who get it, for people who understand that the COVID-19 thing is bullshit that has been cranked out by the cabal system in a desperation move on the heels of what is basically the slowly unfolding cosmic waves that have been coming in since 1221 2019 as I documented in the show, hmm, let's see, episode three or four, probably, talked about that. This is documentable. This isn't New Age fairy bullshit. This is stuff that has actually been documented by real astronomers and real scientists, and it goes into a lot of esoteric teachings as well that have been looking at this period as being a, a, a very high period of activity. Hence, the reason why I did the Eye of the Needle. Because it was going back and reflecting on 2012 through the lens of everything that preceded 2019. Because I began this series in the summer of 2019. Yeah, I know. I'm only, what, almost eight episodes into it after all that time. But the, the point of it is, it takes time to develop a view with any sophistication that presents where we are at because we're pulling data in from all kinds of different sources. So I guess my first question, Shane, is the people that told you this were your upline through the, what I guess we would call the Illuminati, or the family, or the parents, um, the covens. In other words, the people that imparted the story to you were themselves, if I understand your narrative correctly, what you call virtual intelligence. In other words, intelligence that has an amazing affinity towards realistic intelligence, but is yet not organic. And so, again, the story has kind of, kind of, kind of been told before. You know, it's the futility of human beings who live and then they die and they have to go to purgatory, or it is this never-ending hallucination of hell. Um, but this one has a different twist because technically you're already dead. If you're inside of a pod and you're plugged into a computer on a life support system, uh, by my definition, not only are you dead, but you probably were never alive in any real sense because consciousness seeks to inhabit an active agent player on a real scale inside of real gameplay, not a passive player with a visor on watching other people play the game as surrogates, if I understand exactly what's been put out in the series based on what I heard on this latest episode. And so because sensibilities are fragile and the times we live in sort of demand that we be circumspect about what we put into the field. I mean, I, I, I had somebody on Facebook recently when I posted something about... Um, the coming vaccines going out to Indonesia and the fact that given the demographic of Indonesia, I feel very strongly there's entirely this possibility that this, this um, vaccine that the military supposedly was leaked talking about in maybe 2015 in a, a DOD briefing as being an atheist vaccine, the, the vaccine that basically 
takes away any belief in deity, in God, in anything theological. And somebody challenged me on that and asked me about putting those kind of thought forms into the field. It's, it's a fair question. It's a fair question to ask at what point we drift away from information and into the realm of promoting what you could call thought forms, egregores, and, and, and creational spin-offs, you know, the spirals that come from thought forms that foment under pressure inside of our, our creative construct. And then, you know, that really goes to the point of this that we can sit and imagine such a thing means that we possess a consciousness that understands intrinsically that we do not live in a deterministic universe. We live in a universe which responds energetically to us, both as a collective and an individual consciousness. And the agency of free will and the exercise of of our minds is the most powerful aspect. It's the thing they've always tried to kill. When any empire comes forward, they generally take out the intellectuals, they take out the priesthood, and they take out the artists that have the ability to creationally conceive reality in a way that is beyond the dynamic of, again, this everyday humdrum of our existence. So the way you test any suppositions of, especially what Shane's put out, is examine it from the perspective of your higher self. Uh, Theoretically, if you listen to this show, you at least understand the construct of your own soul extends far beyond the human body. In other words, there's an aspect of soul that dwells within us. There's an aspect of soul that sits above that, which also directs other aspects of ourselves that exist in a multidimensional, multi-level player game, so to speak. You're living many existences, many lives, many aspects of yourself reflected dimensionally in, a, in, a, in kind of a spectrographic time array. I don't like timelines, you know that. I don't like the linear aspect of time. I like the spiral. And sometimes spirals go to loops. You know, energetically disrupted, that was the point of the last show where I talked about mass events. So we're in a mass event. We're going to be in a mass event until the end of 2021 in this present reality largely because it is required in order to derail energies that are coming into the earth recurrently and with greater magnitude over the next five years. So energetically, I want to be heard and seen supporting concepts that build the individual consciousness and the individual's ability to operate in the realm of magic to operate from the realm of higher consciousness, to begin to connect to and pull greater and greater magnitudes of energy and thought and vision down from that soul construct. The concept of the veil is largely one of a convenience of illusion, not illusion, allusion, It allows us to conceptualize the fact that in this present experience, we have separated from the collective of the soul, which is the soul collective of us individuated and the collective of the soul as an entity that exists in concert with other souls. That was complicated. Sorry. I almost get a headache sometimes trying to explain this. So... The reconnection of that is the reconnection and the sparking of energies. Because a lot of the souls on this side of the so-called veil have been asleep. And they've been asleep not just in this lifetime, but many lifetimes. 
um, without going into reincarnation loops and all of that, it's fair to say that um, most human beings living on this world right now have not conceived beyond their own present existence in a way to be able to dramatically imagine what a multi-dimensional, multi-arrayed existence looks like. But the goal remains that at the very least we inspire people to hope, to achieve a sense of unity first within themselves, and then as we're able to, to work outward from the edges, because that's what we're doing. We're not building this from the center of anything. The center is occupied right now, and we're in displacement. If If this world could have been totally conquered and taken over and subjected, the design would not have been to put us into pods and plug us into machines. It would have been to terminate us from incarnation or existence in this zone. And this comes into some of the aspects, again, of agency of free will and the concept of a mission that's an imprint upon us. And without this mission being placed inside of us, and you know it, you feel it, um, those of us in certainly the communities I'm around have a very strong sense of mission. They're healers, they're alchemists, they're artificers, they're musicians, they're amazing poets and dreamers and philosophers. They're, they're people who are scaling the heights of their own creativity as a means to bridge a gap into a place that you would say is somewhat beyond, again, this, this, this mundane experience that we presently have. It is both a hope and a concretization. It is very much magic in the way it works. The other side of this is that I'm not willing to give up my concept of an organic earth to the concept of a complete simulation of an organic earth, which also negates, by the way, any forms of natural magic. A simulation of magic is no different than a Walt Disney picture. It is simply a a, a flickering motion picture which can elicit no response It can elicit no action. It does nothing to change, which goes back into the biggest problem I see in the pod people scenario that that Shane has rolled out largely is that this this is nihilism. This, in the end, simply takes away any responsibility, any real sense of urgency about attempting to correct things first within ourselves and reflecting that out to the world at large. Um, I know that, I, I, I know Shane doesn't look at it this way, but I'm not looking right now at anything other than the effects of the words that were spoken and the concepts behind something that places us in a situation in which We have no choice, no ability to respond, and we continue to loop over and over again without recourse until we either die or unplug from the unit. And then I guess there's what, like a golden ticket thing to get back to the organic earth? I don't know. Dude, I don't know what you're saying. In some sense, what I get is this is a script and you believe it. And I get that you believe it. And I get that you're putting this out there with your own integrity and your own words. But I have real problems with how this is being received and what it means to people who listen passively to other people that they perceive to be, let's just say, experts, authorities, insiders. When we trade on inside information, we're trading, again, kind of on the agency of the people who are providing information. You know, this has a whole double-blind thing going on to it, as people who have worked as intelligence officers know, that information is traded, but the currency of information is the, 
legitimacy of the information, which is always, always validated by multiple sources. So in a longer view, we have to look not at the information itself, because we, could, we, can, we can go back over a lot of this. I overlaid some of what was being broken out, again, with the Revelation book by David Griffin, because that was my starting point. But the Revelation book for me was just a, it was a, it was a departure point because there's so many things in the book that go into this concept that goes into, you know, the probable futures database, the voice of God software, the fact that we are running a replay and that the, the game, as it's called in the book, was largely rigged by the people who won it the last time, which were the people who want to control all of humanity. There is at least an end game in what's played out in the book of Revelation. This goes into, as well, mind control projects and specifically Project Looking Glass, because it's long been out there on the internet because of Project Camelot, that Project Looking Glass, or Looking Glass as it was called, was some sort of technology. The truth of the matter is that Project Looking Glass, the only technology was humans. There were computers involved. There were sensor arrays involved. It was a simulation for all intents and purposes. It was a simulation that was run off what was basically a highly advanced remote viewing program that was using data feedback from the database that was then acting heuristically to respond to predictive impulses coming from the consciousness of the people inside of the project. There was no technology in Looking Glass. Looking Glass was very much a simulation program designed to harvest data. This is exactly, by the way, by the way, this is exactly what Q and QAnon running their scripts on the internet is about. In a sense, what they've done is they have created a very sophisticated modeling system. They have used highly encoded encrypted messages and, and puzzles, puzzle grams. This is like Circada 3301, and what they've done is they spawned off of that this concept of, of basically a puzzle hunt in deep insider secrets that are then arrayed out through various drops and looped through the system in order to gain feedback heuristics from people who are called the Anon. The drops are then analyzed, assessed, and new drops are deployed based on feedback from the original data that has come in from the previous loops. And so, in a lot of ways, all of this feels oddly similar to me, like this is a test to see exactly how far down the rabbit hole will go, when, to be perfectly honest with you, digging any more rabbit holes is not the way to go, people. Um, look up, look inside. And so I'm sort of left at a frustration level because Shane's my friend. I could call him up and talk to him about it. But I also got feedback from people that was concerning enough that I thought, I need to put some of these thoughts out. We need to think about this a little more clearly when we hear information, whether it's from a friend or whether it's from somebody we don't like. Um, I tend to respond less to people I don't like just because I don't care about them and I just am apathetic and ignore them. But when it's a friend, when it's a colleague, when it's somebody that's been on this show, somebody that's been promoted, and when I myself promoted links for this series early on with Shane, um, I was optimistic because I wanted to see him begin to put out some of the stuff that I know is inside him. And there's some good stuff there, man. But this feels to me like a setup. This feels like there's a, there's a gleaming jewel of truth in the middle of all this. But it's not the thing that you're hearing. If your impulse from this is to find that, well, it's just a simulation and we'll just party like it's 2029, 
In other words, let's kick the clock over to 2030. Oh, wait, the UN already did that. Uh, that's where they wanted to take us with COVID, by the way. Um, I'm not willing to live in a protracted reality that continues to challenge me on the premise that, that somehow the existence I hold right now in this present consciousness, my life, my life stream, my generations preceding and following me are in any way meaningless because they are part of some sort of simulated loop system made by a metal god that is simply running what? Some sort of program. And I guess I have to ask by who and for what purpose? I'm not implying anything here in terms of character. What I'm implying here is the story itself on its base layer isn't consistent with what I personally know, believe, understand, have been shown and my own experiences over the course of the last 40 years and even before that that deep inside of me, my personal intuition tells me that no story like this has the essentials of what you would call the spark of life, the spark of hope. Human beings, in every sense of the word, are something mystical and far beyond the biochemical makeup, the electrical system, even the genetics itself, the DNA with all of its mystical quantum properties, we're more than that. We exist at another level above many of the beings that have lorded themselves over us. And that includes, by the way, the handlers and controllers who control voices on the internet, either directly or indirectly, either via inducement, control, subliminals, or whatever. Um, take from that what you will. But I'm far more interested at this point in people not getting caught up in the morass of hopelessness of this deterministic universe that demands we bow down and be slaves, or even worse, that we're not even active players, that you are plugged into a computer. And I, I have to reject that. I'm sorry, Shane, respectfully. I can't sign off on what you're doing, man. And I certainly do not want to induce people to continue taking in something that creates a sense of powerlessness, hopelessness, despair, nihilism, or just plain fuck it. I'm not about that. So it's getting late. Um, I am so far behind right now in getting podcasts and shows out. I've been in a very big project for the last three weeks, which all came together very suddenly over this last week. I am working long hours. I am trying to write. Uh, last week, last night, I lost three hours of writing material because uh, my MacBook locked up. My Microsoft Word failed to autosave, and so about 2,200 words disappeared into the bowels of my MacBook, never to be seen again, and I have to rewrite them. So in a lot of ways, this is me reaching out, touching base, thanking you for listening, uh, thanking Shane if you hear this. Um, I'm open to dialogue on anything, and i I am certainly not in the mood for battles or enemy mindsets, but I am interested in clarity of thought. I'm interested in integrity, and I'm really interested in keeping people away from anything that installs programs of fear and hopelessness into them. And so we'll close this out here. Um, those of you who support me over on Patreon, you have some shows coming. I will get those out in the next few days, and you'll just you'll, you'll have a big plate on you on your lap for um, the coming week. We're bumping up on election time. It's the witch witching season. No, not Halloween. This ritual America style where uh, everybody runs out to vote and be seen doing something and the ballots will come in. Um, nobody will be happy. Nobody wins. 
nobody loses. It's all just about, hey, are you invested in the game? Are you invested in the game? Um, wow. Hope not. This is anyway, Off Planet Radio. Winding up for now. This is Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is out there. But really, it's inside you. Go deep. Examine it for yourself. Think critically. Love you. See you another time.